everyone, I'm Russ, uh, call sign WD9DD. This video is the unboxing of a Cyril Mazzoni Stealth Loop Antenna. Uh, I will put out a second video uh, shortly uh, that will go over uh, the operations and some of my uh, impressions. However, uh, what I can say for the couple weeks that I have been using the antenna, I am very impressed by it. I live in a very restrictive HOA. Uh, homeowners Association. Uh, I did have my station in the garage. Uh, that gets pretty hot in the summer and it's very humid in the winter here in Silicon Valley. That's our rainy season. Uh, that environment is not very good for electronics nor is it very good for the operator. Uh, recently though I did move my station up into the living room and things are a lot better now. Unfortunately, when I did that, I lost access to the antenna that I was using, which was essentially my downspouts. So I had to come up with an alternative. Now, I, I need to give a big shout out to the local hams in the area and onto Facebook. Um, I received a lot of suggestions, uh, some more feasible than others, some, uh, how, how shall we say, more creative than others, uh, especially in the language that was used. Um, but one suggestion that resonated with me, pun intended, uh, was to use magnetic loop antenna. Uh, they're compact, they can be stealthy, and uh, also they tend not to be as noisy as other types of antennas. Uh, here in Silicon Valley, it is a roiling, boiling bowl of RFI, and uh, to the point where a lot of amateurs here don't even uh, work HF. Um, uh, so uh, I did build a couple, uh, you know, because I do like to build things. I'm terrible with the mechanics of it, the electronics of it, though, um, I'm pretty good. I, I have good electronic skills. I used to be a field engineer. Mechanically, though, I have to say I'm not the best mechanic in the world. Um, so, uh, but the big issue was that whatever antenna that I did build had to be on our deck. The problem with that is our deck is visible to our neighbors across the way. It's basically at our front door. So most decks are in the back of a house. In our case, they were in the front of the house. So, um, uh, you know, I do have a chameleon F loop, which I do use. It's uh, basically a QRP antenna. And it is an antenna that I plan to use uh, if I go operating uh, remotely. I do have a uh, Microbitix uh, uh, rig that I will be finishing to build, and I'll be taking that up on some of the local mountain types tops um, in in the area. Since we are in a valley, we're surrounded by hills, uh, very tall hills. Sometimes we get snow on them. Uh, but I also needed something that I could operate remotely because I do have a lot of body capacitance. Um, I did make an antenna and homebrewed an Arduino uh, that I was able to tune uh, uh, simply by uh, uh, turning a knob with a optical encoder. Um, but again, there was the visibility aspect. I did look at commercial offerings. Um, there was an antenna with remote cap capabilities that could handle 100 watts. Uh, it did have some mixed reviews. What products don't these days? Um, the quality control reports were the ones that uh, did cause me a little bit of concern. But the one that really caused me concern was that the uh, uh, manufacturer kept slipping their delivery dates. And I wanted to get on the air sooner than later. Um, I did have a 10 meter and a 6 meter dipole that I was able to stretch across the deck uh, just below the decking uh, so that uh, it would not be visible. Uh, but I wanted to, um, uh, to do something that would be uh, a little more efficient and uh, even though I could get on 20 meters receiving, I could barely squirt a signal across the street doing that. So after a lot of investigation, that's why I decided to buy a Cyril Mazzoni uh, Stealth Loop 
antenna. Um, I don't have it in its final position yet. I still want to do some experimentation with that. Um, and once I do have it placed, I'll uh, do the second video, uh, kind of walk through some of the things that I had to go through in order to do that. Um, now, the interesting thing with the serial Mazzoni that I've learned uh, since uh, uh, since deploying it is that most loop antennas want to be at least a tenth of a wavelength above ground. Serial Mazzoni stealth loop, though, likes to be close to the ground, and uh, uh, so much so that even though it was only eight feet off of the ground uh, on my deck, I needed to do a uh, put something underneath it, something reflective. Right now I have some screening material under it, and that has been useful. Uh, but I'm also experimenting with some other types of materials. I'm also looking at um, how I might be able to uh, uh, put this under my deck. Uh, it is a secured location. However, what I don't know is how much rebar is in the concrete surrounding the deck. And it may not be possible if there's too much rebar in there. Um, about this particular video, I want to apologize up front. Most of it was shot in, uh, in uh, portrait mode, and that's because I had to set up the camera on the back of my car. I originally had the antenna sent to my office um, because having it sent to the house would have been a hassle. Um, even though there were people there to receive it, uh, they would not have been able to deal with such a big box. Um, so, uh, when it came here, I did try to put the box in the back seat of my car. It would not fit. I could barely, I, I could get it in, but it would also mean having one of the doors left ajar. So, uh, I put the phone on the trunk of the car or bonnet if you're uh, in a country that actually speaks English. Um, and did the unboxing in my parking lot. So, uh, sorry for the per quality, and what I will be doing is doing a voiceover for that. So, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's get into the unboxing of this uh, right now. I hope you like it, and I will join you a little bit later. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so here's the beginning of the unboxing, as you can see. Uh, the box is pretty big. I couldn't get it all into the frame. It is uh, secured with staples. The box, of course, uh, came from DX Engineering, but it came from Italy to DX Engineering, so it had to be very well secured. Um, the staples are pretty long and pretty sharp, so when you get yours, uh, you need to make sure that you're careful of the staples. They, they all hurt. Now you can see there is a foam centerpiece. I'll be showing that shortly. In the box are some accessories, uh, such as the um, tuning unit, the keypad. Uh, they're two separate things. So here's the inside of the box. As you can see, uh, it's very well packed inside. The uh, uh, foam ends uh, hold the antenna up. The antenna itself is not very heavy. Uh, I think the whole box weighs about 35, 40 pounds. The antenna itself is, oh, probably about 25 pounds of it. Not very heavy at all. Uh, most of it is packing uh, material uh, to make sure that the uh, antenna is well secured. Uh, so next, we're going to open up the accessory box. And as you can see, uh, the, uh, the accessories are very well packed. That's kind of like in the old days with the shredded newspaper. It looks like stuff that has gone through a uh, paper shredder, uh, and it is very tightly packed in there. Uh, outcomes first is the antenna tuning unit along with a CD on the bottom. You kind of saw it there. Uh, the CD has the instruction uh, manual. I would suggest reading that. Uh, and there's also a uh, official Ciro Mazzoni pen. Inside of this box is the wall wart and uh, the AC cable and, uh, well, uh, from the wall wart to the antenna tuning unit 
and then also the power cable to the US 110 volts, uh, you know, very well packed again. So uh, the uh, unit, of course, being designed and developed in Europe can also hand 240. Uh, digging a little bit further into the box, uh, we come across the keypad. Uh, there is a connection between the keypad and the antenna tuning unit. Uh, there's the keypad there. Uh, it attaches to the antenna tuning unit, as I mentioned. And again, you can see the CD on the bottom. Um, okay, continuing with the unpacking, uh, we now find the power cable. This cable goes between the antenna tuning unit and the motor on the antenna because the antenna is moved electronically uh, by antenna tuning unit, so it, it searches for the best SWR. So uh, that is the unboxing. So here a closer look at the unit. As you can see, uh, uh, there's the connection, there's a hinge there. The uh, capacitor is up on top. It's an open air capacitor. There it is there. And the unit is actually a dark green. A lot of pictures show it as black, but it's actually a dark green. I'd like to thank you for joining me in this unboxing and uh, in a few weeks I will have a review of the antenna. It, I, like I said, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, it has uh, done very well for me. I've made a few DX contacts. Uh, right now propagation is kind of horrendous. Uh, I've tried to do some whisper and uh, it has not been too uh, impressive uh, with that over the last uh, couple weeks. but. Uh, the antenna does work and it does give me a lot more flexibility than what I had uh, using the rain gutters. 73 from WD9DD, Whiskey Delta 9, Delta Delta.